Alrighty guys, for part two, uh, we're working on numbers five through eight here. And question number five says to find the distance between points J and J. That's weird. Maybe it was supposed to be J and K. I don't know. So we're going to find the distance between those two points. And uh, to do so, we're going to use the distance formula, like you see off to the right there. All right, guys. So what I need to do before I get to work here is I need to label these as X's and Y's. Is. So for point J, X is 3 and Y is 7. For point, uh, we're going to call it K. Uh, the X is negative 9 and the Y is 2. So we're going to label those suckers so we know where to plug them into our formula. So our distance formula, which is the cousin of Pythagorean theorem, says X minus X. So we're going to subtract the two X values. Now when I do that, it says 3 minus, and it says negative 9. The other X is a negative 9, so 3 minus negative 9. And then the y's are a 7 and a 2, so it's going to say 7 minus 2. Now, because I was doing a 3 minus a negative 9, sorry, my dog's playing with his ball over there. Quit squeaking! Because I have a uh, 3 minus a negative 9, we know it's going to end up being a plus. That's what you do when you got a negative against a negative there. So that ends up being a 12 squared, and that ends up being a 5 squared. So that looks like a 144 plus 25. If we add those together, that's 169. And 169 is one of those perfect square roots. The square root of 169 is exactly 13. So the distance between point J and point K here would be exactly 13 units. All right, now guys, if you don't know your perfect squares, um, uh, right now that's okay so if, if if you're showing your work and you're getting square root of 169 on the test I'm a happy camper all right all right up next we got to plot these points point a is at 1 comma 5 1 comma 5 I'm gonna pause the video and remove that ball from my dog's mouth all right so where were we um, all right, so that's point A at five, oh, sorry, one comma five. Remember, you do your X first. So B is gonna be at three comma five, so three on the X axis, and a five on the Y axis, point B. And C is at four comma one, two, three, four comma one. And D is at two comma one. All right, let's see what kind of shape we got here. Looking a little slanted. All right, so we do see that we have a beautiful parallelogram. All right. A beautiful parallelogram there, and we're gonna find the perimeter and we're gonna find the area. All right, all right. So I'm gonna do, actually do the area first because uh, it's easier and I think it'll make you happy. The area of a parallelogram can be found by doing base times the height. So in class, I would say, hey guys, what side do you want to make the base? And you would tell me the easiest side possible. You would say DC is the base, and it has a length of one, two units. And then I would say, hey guys, what's the height? And you guys would tell me that it is building up from the base, and that goes to the other side. It is one, two, three, Four. So it's four units to get to the other side there. So our height is four. So our formula is just base times height. So our area is just eight units squared or eight square units. Now the perimeter is going to be a little more work. Remember the perimeter is the sum of the sides. And that means we're going to add all the sides together. So a parallelogram has four sides. So we're going to be adding four numbers together. Two of the sides are really easy because they're horizontal. So like we said down here, the base DC was two units. And the side opposite from that, AB up top here, is also two units. So I've got two of my four sides taken care of. We've got to find the others. Now this is where a uh, little distance formula comes in, all right? So to find AD, I'm gonna make it blue here, make AD blue. To find AD, I've gotta do the distance formula. 
The reason I have to do the distance formula is because AD is diagonal. It's not horizontal like AB and DC. So now when we do this, we're going to use our distance formula. And we're going to use our rise and our run in our distance formula. We're going to count. I'm going down one, two, three, four. I'm going down four. I can put a negative four. I can put a positive four. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to go over one. So my rise and my run would be four and one. Uh, all right, so that's going to be four squared, which is 16, and one squared, which is one. So the distance of AD is equal to the square root of 16 plus one, the square root of 17. All right, so AD is square root of 17. Now the cool thing about a parallelogram is the other side is exactly the same. So side BC is also square root of 17. So my perimeter is going to be 2 plus 2 plus square root of 17 plus square root of 17. And we can simplify that because 2 plus 2 is 4. And square root of 17 plus another square root of 17 is 2 square roots of 17. So that's the best answer for the perimeter. All right, so for our perimeter, we've got 4 plus 2 squares of 17. For our area, we've got 8 square units. For number 5, we said the distance was 13 units. Now, on number, um, number 8, it says bisect the angle. Now, this is something we didn't get to do because I was out sick for a couple days. But to do something like this, we would take our compass. All right, remember those suckers with the, the pointy end and then, oh, the pointy end, and then there was the pencil end. So what we would do is we would take our compass and we would make a nice swipe. All right, we would have two intersections on that swipe. And from those intersections, we would take the, the compass again and we would put a, the pointy end uh, on that intersection there and we would swipe it through. And then we would put the pointy end on the other intersection and swipe it through the other. I made that kind of weird, but whatever. Swipe it through the other side in the interior. And when you did that, you would make a point that's perfectly in the middle of that angle. So if you connected that point right there, let's make it purple. If you connected that purple point to the vertex, it'd be right through the middle, which means that would be an angle bisector. All right, we'll check that out again tomorrow. But um, the one on the test is crazy easy, okay? It's really, really easy. In fact, if you just watch this video, that's plenty of information to answer the one on the test. All right, guys, so um, this section of the review definitely covered the distance formula a couple times, all right? And it also talked about area. Now, along with the area of a parallelogram, gram, make sure you can find the area of other figures as well, like a triangle or a rectangle, all right, guys? Um, I'll put out the other videos uh, later. Have fun.